my dear sisters and brothers in the Lord. So the story in the Gospel presents a concern that this man who approached Jesus. And as a good Jew, he had to observe the 613 commandments a very concrete translations into concrete situations of the Decalogue. So he's wondering, he was wondering, the 613 of his commandments, which one was it? Which one would be the greatest? And the answer given by Jesus was very simple. Don't worry about all these detailed commandments. What you need to have is love. And that's a new covenant, of course. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments capture in a nutshell the constitution of the people of Israel, the Ten Commandments. The first three commandments have to do with God. Last seven have to do with relationship with neighbor. That's all that matters. Love God and love your neighbor. And love your neighbor as yourself. You must love yourself, of course. And you love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> and the essence of all these commandments us, is, is given in the Love, written in the hearts of men and women. And that's laid out in marriage. So we go back to the first reading. There we have the violence being led by the angel Raphael, known as Brother Azarius, to find a wife. And he found sail. And Sarah had been married seven times, and everyone, every man who was married to him or had married her, something of her, died. And it was only the buyers who had come along and would now be the true husband, the real husband for her. What does this tell us? It tells us that God has a hand in this marriage between Tobias and sin. God has a hand in it. Maybe the seven previous marriages did not work according to God's plan. So they were all failures. But this one is. And Tobias then took Sarah for a prayer when both of them were left in a room, the violence knelt down in prayer with sin. And praise God, praise God for having arranged for both of them to marry as husband and wife. And they went back to the time of Adam and Eve, whom God created for each other as husband and wife. And that marriage would be one flesh. That marriage would be one flesh anchored in love. And in that marriage, all the commandments would be kept. For as long as there was love, love between the violence and sin, and their love for God. For as long as that love was there, all the commandments all the 613 laws would be kept. There's no need to worry about the individual laws. It's love. And God came into their lives in this marriage of love. And what holds true for the buyers and Sarah also holds true for all of us. Those of you who are married, Yes, we could say 
the choice of your spouse was yours. But somehow I believe that God had a hand in it. And I think of young people who are married to a young man, he goes his way to whatever Australia, Europe, America to study and then there he finds a girl as if there were no girls beautiful enough for him, would you? I feel that it's not a And so in that arrangement, then the young man responds. So also for your marriages, how you make your spouses, where you make your spouses, feel God at the time. Then you have to play your part. Sometimes, or not sometimes, but there is a say, I haven't found my Mr. Right yet, or I haven't found my right princess. Is there a right a Mr. Right? Is there a right princess? There will be if I do my part to become the Mr. Right for the right princess. If I do my part to become the right princess for the Mr. Right, I have to do my part. And that's a covenant in marriage. It's a bilateral covenant. And there must be fidelity in that covenant. But that fidelity can come about only when there is love. And love, yes, it is something that comes from the heart. There is a natural attraction. But we also have to build up that love, to deepen that love. So that the decalogue is there, so that all the commandments are there in that marriage. And it's very important, just like the Bibles and Sarah, Went down on their knees in prayer, so also to become a Mr. Right and to become the right princess, the couple must be on their knees and pray to God. Their love for each other is anchored on their love for God and must lead them back to their love for God. And in that love for God, they will want God to be part and parcel of their marriage. And so prayer is so important in married life. And as I apply the first reading and gospel reading to married life, I also look at the life of peace. We too are called by God and we respond. And we respond in love. But if we, are, if we do not pray, then we may slowly stray from the vocation, the mission that God has given us. And we may stray so far away from it that our priesthood is no longer a priesthood uh, lived in ministry for people. We can stray away from God, we can stray away from the people. We can exploit our position for our own self ends, our own ends and purposes. And that is very wrong. So as I address you as many people here, I also look at myself as, a, as one who is called to ministry. All of us have been called by God marriage, the ministry, the single life, all of us must respond with fidelity because God loves us and because we also love God.